In August of 2015, Cornerbrook, Newfoundland hosted the 42nd General Council of the United Church of Canada. Hundreds of ministers and lay people arrived to make decisions that will affect the future of the church. The council met in the hockey arena next to the Cornerbrook campus of Memorial University. Are you ready to say this feels like a proposal that could go to a motion later and let's just see where we're at? Hundreds of delegates gathered to make decisions. They were surrounded by well wishes from churches all over the country. Each issue was debated for hours at a time. This is going to do it, and the way they're going to do it is through the establishment of an office. Giving idle hands lots of opportunity to stay busy. The council had a long agenda, making decisions on social justice issues, forming partnerships with international churches, and saying goodbye to moderator Gary Patterson and choosing his successor. One of the most important items on the agenda was a proposal to restructure the governance of the United Church. I declare the motion to have be carried. The present structure was created in 1925, when three churches came together to become the United Church of Canada. Each of them came to the Union with their own preferences for how they wanted to be governed. Congregationalists liked individual congregations to have some autonomy. The Presbyterians liked presbyteries for mutual support and accountability among congregations. The Methodists liked regional councils for making decisions. And all of the denominations wanted a national council. Rather than try to pick between these options, the United Church kept all of them, giving us the governance we have today. But over the years, churches have complained that it's too bureaucratic and unwieldy for the smaller church that we have today. Revenues are down and deficits are climbing, and there's fewer volunteers to serve on committees. So, to find a new way of doing things, the church created the Comprehensive Review Task Group. It came up with a new vision for how the church could be governed in the future. The new system was presented at Cornerbrook, where it was debated and discussed for five days. The structure is more fluid than the old one. It starts with how people worship. Many of us still gather together in churches, large and small. But in the future, more people may be gathering in house churches, coffee shops, and camps. So to capture this diversity, these groups are all now known as communities of faith. These communities of faith will have more autonomy than before. They can make decisions about hiring and firing ministers more easily, and buying and selling property. Each region will have a regional council made up of ministers and lay people. Unlike presbyteries, these councils will have less power and will exist to provide advice and support to communities of faith. It's still unclear whether there will be just a few regional councils or many. The new system also kept the national office, which is now called the denominational council. Its duties remain the same. In the past, the National Office drew its funding from the Mission and Service Fund. But now it will derive its funding directly from communities of faith, which will be shared with the regional councils. The exact amount is still being worked out. The Mission and Service Fund will be used only for mission and program activities of the Church. 
This new system is designed to help communities of faith share ideas and experiences. So it will create networks where people can gather together to work on specific issues. There will also be clusters where local communities of faith can gather to work on issues of common concern. Ministers will also get a forum to support each other and share ideas, called the Association of Ministers. It was also recognized that there had to be a way to oversee the conduct of ministers. So a new structure, called the Office of Vocation, is being created. It will maintain standards for ministers and investigate cases where misconduct is suspected. This body will have the power to discipline ministers. Finally, the church's indigenous ministries will have their own aboriginal ministries, which will work in tandem with the denominational council. This is the look of the new governance model of the United Church. The structure has been approved by the General Council in Cornerbrook. However, because it will change so many things, the Council's decision is not enough. This new structure needs approval from presbyteries and congregations, so we'll be asked to vote on it in the year to come. There is a sense of hope at the General Council that the Church has a thriving future ahead of it. With God's help, we'll be able to forge a new way forward for another 90 years of doing God's work in Canada.